There we go. Welcome to the podcast, Jamie Jamie McCart. Uh, thanks for having me, mate. Not a problem at all. It's a pleasure. Thank you for spending your afternoon with me. Uh, you've just travelled over from Perth, haven't you? I'm glad to be here. After a little training session. I cover my expenses. <laughs> Listen, you've got a free can of seven up there. Don't hide it. Show everyone the can of seven up. Uh, Athletes do drink fizzy drinks as well. Delighted to have it. Uh, low sugar though. So no uh, sugar seven in up that. Free. Okay, so majority of listeners will know who Jamie McCart is. But for those who don't, I'm going to give them a little bit on Jamie McCart. And then if I don't do you justice, you tell me and you can tell you can add on anything else. All right. So Jamie is 24. He Celtic youth career, Celtic debut, Scotland internationalist. He played for Inverness, St. Marion, Alawa and now St. Johnson. Is that, have I missed anything in there? I had a few loans. I'm trying to think. Aye, that was St. Marin Alawa. St. Marin Alawa loans. Inverness. Uh huh. So we're going to get right into those. Is that a fair overview of, of aye, yourself, aye. Mr. McCart? Too kind. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and big shout out to G4 Claims as well for the studio. You were, you were oh, admiring it, weren't you? Incredible. Incredible. Lovely. And you also love free stuff. So a free can of 7 Up is free made. vodka Diet Coke. That's, that, is that what you're drinking? <laughs> <laughs> cut that out. <laughs> we'll cut that out. Don't worry. Don't worry. Okay, so before we get stuck in, Jamie, and talk about the different clubs and stuff. Tell me, I like to do this, tell me a day in the life of Jamie McCart right now, St. Johnson player. What time do you get up at? What What do you do during the day? What does a day look like? Uh, probably the now. Normal training day, I get up maybe quarter to seven. Really. The reason I got up that early is because I've got a dog. It's an so early start. Aye. And I need to get up for her, take her out. <clears throat> She's a German Shepherd, so she needs a lot of exercise. So I need to do that. Then so out a walk first thing in the morning? Out a walk first thing. Uh, then back in, breakfast kind of quick turn around go and meet uh, the boys I car share with because we're probably we're about an hour for Perth so we need to be in for about quarter past ten quarter past ten but uh, we like to go in me, Sean Rooney and Mikey O'Hallan we like to go in early and do the gym good professionals uh, love that love that so but I think it's just a good habit anyway because yeah. if there's an accident or something on True. the motorway so, so what, t- what time do you meet up at to travel over I think we are about half eight at Broadwood half eight so but so Someone's always late. You're going to get some St. John's fans turning up half eight Broadwood, try and jump in your car to training. Aye, for Sean <laughs> for the cup hero. <laughs> uh, but no, so we're there, into training, do a bit of gym, whatever, have a bit of breakfast with the boys, have a laugh. Uh, Double yeah. breakfast then? Coffee, Aye. breakfast, whatever. Aye, so, so in the house, do you have, is this like your pre-training meal in the house or do you have your pre-training meal? Varies, I think, depending <clears> on how hard the session we have. See, I struggle to eat in the morning, mm-hmm. so I just try to force stuff down, so... When I wake up, I can have a slice of toast or something. But most yeah. mornings, I'll struggle to eat. Yeah. Uh, and then just when we're in, just training quarter past, but not quarter to eleven we start. Do, do, does past. the does the club put on breakfast for you? They put on like toast, cereal, aye, aye, aye. coffee, all that, just uh-huh, basic uh-huh. stuff. No, no top end teams, but yeah. it's good to have. Yeah, convenience yeah. wise. Uh, then we'll train maybe an hour and a half, two hours at most. Mm-hmm straight in lunch and then because we live so far away from the training ground and that most boys are in showered and yeah. you're away usually by one o'clock it's just the nature of living over an hour away mm-hmm, mm-hmm. so uh, back and then straight because my girlfriend Netflix no, no, <laughs> my girlfriend works so I'm straight in and then I need to take the dog straight back out for maybe half an hour 45 minutes uh, and then finally I'll relax cool then. cool and what about so did the club have a gym the club do. What uh, do do you do you do gym stuff at the club or yourself or what, uh, can, what? How do you work that? Well, I invested a lot of money in a gym for my own house. To be fair, so it's mm-hmm. something I always wanted to do. So uh, if I can't find the time or I'm not feeling it at the club, I'll do it when I get home. Uh, mm-hmm. I, I quite prefer that as well. So you're in your own your own space. Yeah, yeah. And then um, what kind of stuff do you typically do? So pre training, you're maybe like what are you stretching, foam rolling, getting yourself ready in the gym before training yeah. at the club and then afternoons what, what's your kind of focus throughout the week uh, sometimes I mix it up to be fair because we like to go in and sometimes do like upper body before training and, okay, yeah. some boys don't like doing that yeah. feel like it tires them out a wee bit I actually quite prefer especially after a drive and that yeah. feel, makes you wake up a wee bit mm-hmm. uh, and then most days our training's quite I wouldn't say it's heavy but it's always like a quite tough session so really by the afternoon and that I've 
you struggle to do legs or anything yeah, like that. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Most of the time, it, it is uh, injury prevention or upper body. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Really important. Aye. Okay. Um, and then the rest of the evening, are you a cook? Are you are you cooking uh, dinner? I do. I do love cooking. Yeah. One thing I hate is shopping, though. I hate going to the shops. You must. You must get a wee ho- home delivery, no? Or are you are you way out grocery shopping? I'm too lazy to get home, home <laughs> delivery. I think. Just see by going on the internet and putting everything in and ordering it. I'm just too lazy, so. I usually just try shoot after training or uh-huh, if I uh-huh. can, uh, but no, I love cooking. And what what's your go to dish for the evening? Uh, I don't know. Like quite a few. I think, I think my favourite. What's your be- what's your best dish? One I can cook the best is probably risotto. Risotto because it's not too difficult, is it? Okay. And I have it quite a lot, so it's easy to perfect over time. Uh, but and then are you an early nighter or mm, or up late? Eh, uh, probably about half eleven, mid half eleven. Okay, uh, so I don't know what other people are, but yeah. if I'm waking up at maybe about seven, maybe I should sleep more. But that's about the time. Yeah, I fall asleep. And yeah, do you ever kind of have a, a nap after training anything like that? Yeah, because I know, I know, I, I used to do it sometimes. I know some players do kind of have maybe a early afternoon nap, that kind of thing. Uh, I used to struggle with. It. I used to be so full of energy that I couldn't. But I think now, especially. I'm dealing with the dog and all that, and with the drive, the driving takes it out of you. Yeah, that's what you don't realize is when like I miss having the convenience of being twenty minutes for the training ground of that. So yeah, it can be quite a long hour some days because uh, it's basically you're two hours in the car, aren't you? Aye, two hours traveling. Two every hours day. every day is quite a lot. And then if you count in traffic, sometimes on that, aye, it's no ideal. So, uh, and are you is, is training Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday? Is that a typical week? No, we've got a, our gaffer does a different schedule, which I actually quite like. It's okay. a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Right. And then off Thursday. Off Thursday. Aye, uh, so it's quite a good, it's tough getting used to it at the start because it's like three. Three days, quite, three days quite intense, row. yeah. Uh, but once you're used to it, it is quite good. When you come the end of the week, you've got a day off on the Thursday and then Friday's like short, sharp. Yeah, yeah, game, which yeah. Which is quite good. Game Saturday, usually off Sunday. Always, aye. Uh, we've, uh the gaffer's really good with days off. We that's always good. know well in advance and they good. always kind of stay at the same routine. Yeah, because that's what, one thing I remember was it was a big thing, you know, having having a plan so you could make plans for yourself oh, and stuff like that, having a schedule. Uh, used to be a nightmare in the youth days, didn't it? Used back at back Celtic, you'd, uh, have, you'd have the monthly schedule up <laughs> and then you'd, pla- you'd plan you'd plan some, some social things and then they want to be like, by the way, lads, the whole schedule had been scrapped no days off this week, uh, this week, this week. Everything's up in the air. It was, co- it was constant like that, wasn't it? That was Brendan's thing, wasn't it? The what, the, the, kind of, the monthly plan? plan? Yeah, 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 it was quite nice. I it mean, worked we, for the first team, but no for us. Aye, first team, obviously. <laughs> they, they stuck to it, but we were just uh, th- thrown yeah. about, weren't we? So, but I remember it was a big board outside the kind of dressing room, pretty much, for us. Reserve dressing Fizzle, room. Aye, f- just outside the physio room, room, wasn't it? And it had a big monthly plan on it. Aye. But there was no point even looking at the thing because... It changed all the time. Aye, it was gone. And then if you get a call up with training the first team, which is obviously great, but... Sometimes it's aye, because that's maybe your day off. <laughs> it's a nightmare. You can't say no though. <laughs> no, you, you can't. cannot say no. <laughs> All right, so why don't we go back to the beginning um, in terms of football for you? So, am I right in saying were you initially at Queens Park? Was that your first club? Uh, well, boys clubs and that. <laughs> yeah. I trained. I trained with Mullow for a while because my uh, when I was younger, when my dad was there, mm-hmm. he had a good connection with the club. Uh, then it what was age? Just, what age were you then? Oh, I don't know, like seven, eight, All right, nine, okay. just when I was really young. Uh-huh. And then I kind of moved to a uh, boys club. I think it was uh, Mill United because right. a lot of my friends were there. I just wanted to play yeah. with them. Uh, and then Queen's Park was probably around 14, 15. So start 14, when you 15. get to that age where you, you proper think about but I, I. try to be a footballer. Mm-hmm. So uh, how, how long were you at Queen's Park for? I think I was only there for maybe 18 months. A year oh, was and it? Half. it was I, actually, I actually remember playing you. Aye. I remember playing you and I remember you were right up for the game. You were getting stuck right in this. Was it? But you've always, I think you've always had that. Like That's one thing that I've always remembered. As soon as the game starts or training starts, you do have a really competitive, competitive side, don't you? Uh, <laughs> angry man. <laughs> are, you, are you the angriest man at the club? Uh, I, th- I think you're just very competitive. I'm extremely competitive. I think a few of the boys I kick balls away sometimes. Aye, <laughs> I can't aye. help it. Aye. I just get so fired up and I hate losing in training, especially in training. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Uh, but it's just something I can't help, which I think is good for me. Yeah. It keeps me always want to improve, always want to do better. But That's it, it's, it definitely drives you, doesn't it? It's just towing the line with it. Aye, aye. Um, so Queen's Park, 18 months, 18, you reckon? Uh, yeah, I and, think so. And were you playing as a centre-back then? I started as centre-mid. Centre-mid. Uh, and then I just kind of... I think the centre-back get injured or something, I just moved back and I just really liked it there. I mm-hmm. loved it. 
I don't know why you seem to get. I think nowadays you seem to get more of the ball depending on what yeah. team you play for as a centre back. Uh huh. Uh huh. It's just the way it is. So I really enjoyed that side of it. Uh, and then ever since then, I just kind of had to keep working on it. Yeah, yeah. And also, you you do ha- you you're a le- left footed player, um. So you you tie you tie that left centre back position right down. It's mm-hmm. good because they're probably. I don't know. I feel like there's less. Generally, there's always less left footed players at a, at a cl- at a club really. Aye, or it seems to be or most of the time you don't get many centre backs. Aye, are either left they're naturally backs left footed. Yeah, I know. So. But a, I like that. I also like playing left back to be fair. Left back as well, yeah. yeah. Will you overlap? <laughs> <laughs> it's hard, it's hard work. It's it is. hard work. It is. But uh, so eighteen months at Queens Park, and then how did the tra- it was then you mo- you then came to Celtic, yeah. didn't you? How how did that transition work? Were they was it a kind of scouting process? Was there any trial that sort of thing? Well, it was uh, it was David Moss, I think, at the time. Mm-hmm. It said to my dad, but obviously it was difficult with my dad being at the club, so. You know, you automatically assume mm-hmm. he's, I've just went there because yeah. my dad's. So, there. so just for anyone listening who doesn't know, what 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 was your what was your dad's role? My dad's uh, head of youth. Head of youth at Celtic. Celtic. Yeah, so Celtic. He, he basically oversees like yeah. under basically under twenties down, or when we were there, it was B under twenties. The B, B team and then all the youth yeah. teams below. So he's a busy man. He's a busy man. Yeah, he's yeah. a very busy man. So, uh, so obviously, but do you think there was a bit of a? Like, so for you, how, how was that? So. I was for me it was absolutely fine. I knew I'd get slaughtered for it or you'd get abuse from people, but I think you can't really focus on what other yeah. people say in life because you drive yourself crazy thinking about mm-hmm. it. So, mm-hmm. the time for me, I knew uh, I knew it was a good opportunity it's going to play with Celtic. Exactly. With it's something incredible. The facilities, everything about it, the coaching. So, uh, but it was really good. And I, I must say though, Queen's Park was really good. I loved Queen's Park. Park the good coaches, setup. yeah, yeah, a lot of good players there as well. So obviously, they're, 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 come yeah, through. I mean, they are run. I think Queen's Park are run pretty well as yeah. well, aren't they? Obviously, yeah. now they've changed a little bit. They've transitioned into mm-hmm. you know paying the players and a stuff like that full time as well. Yeah. Um. So so how how so what what was the specifics of the move? Did you go on trial at all? I can't remember. So was this when you were fifteen? I was fifteen, but. You, I don't think so because you only need to, when you're fifty under sixteen you only need yeah. to sign the. It was only me. It was only me. They trialed for months because they weren't sure. They're like this guy, he, see, he looks all right sometimes, but then there's sometimes <laughs> he looks like he's never played football before. Remember that which is me. The calf should have won your three year deal. <laughs> exactly, the calf should have won me a three year deal. So signed for Celtic when you were fifteen, and was that down at? So was that that was obviously still in the evenings. Did you go to St Anne's? I the did. Yous had been there a year, aye. and I joined up with. Right, okay. Because remember, Yous were the was it you and the older age group were the first ones there. So, so it was basically the, there was one age group before us, and then it was the older age group, and then it was us. We were the third year, like the mm. third year of players to go in, and we went in right. to third year. And then did you maybe join in fourth I year? I joined fourth year the last year where they fourth year with exams. And how, how was that for you? Because that's, that's a big change. Uh, it was. I was excited at the time, uh, but it was a bit. It was strange being there, wasn't it, with the rest of the school. It was you didn't you didn't know how people would take you, and I'd actually say most people were really nice. Eh? Yeah, because yeah. I wouldn't say there was one boy that I can think of that was big time mm-hmm. or arrogant. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? You're 15 years old. Play- I would, do you mean player wise? Player wise, yeah. like nobody really stuck out as being. Yeah, uh, I, I, I would, I would definitely say so. And I think as well, like there probably wasn't, there wasn't a massive, but like, for now it's maybe different with social media and stuff, but. We were just there. There was no real kind of influences from no, from no. social media or anything like that. Like all the boys wanted to kind of fit in, get on with the other lads, that yeah. sort of thing. And the I think I think I think that did it did happen. Yeah. There was obviously times where there was a bit of kind of animosity between some people. But if, if if you were a good guy, if you were a normal guy, not being a dick about anything or yeah. like not being big time or anything like that, then you, you had no you had no issues, no problems. There was nobody like that though. Like I said, at fifteen, how? Can you be a big time? Yeah, you're I playing know. for youth for Celtic. It's, yeah, do you know what I mean? Everyone's. everyone's but I, th- I, I do. I do think it is possible. I think. I think some players maybe with, it, with social maybe now, with social yeah. media as well, maybe like see posts and that. just that kind of baller or lifestyle. You know the way they think they they yeah. should be behaving. I know. I don't understand that, but it's just it's just a young person laugh, thing. Aye, 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 it's just a big laugh. Well, you were there for you. I, well, you left. Actually. I left. Aye, aye, I, I left. That. Aye, I left. I went third year, left fourth aye. year because my qualifications. Parents, qualifications, and it worked out for me. I, I did. I, I think became you fully qualified before hires. We done all right. I think we managed to get through, didn't we? All the boys. We, yeah, yeah. We done well. To be fair, considering we were all in classes with each other, like. Well, that's it. That was. That, I mean, it's. 
being a, being in a, a class environment where you're trying to like learn and study and, and yeah, teammates. for your teammates is not it's, it's not really conducive Joe to Joe Thompson was the best when Joe, Joe, Joe was the best. Joe Thompson, I've, I've asked him to come on the podcast. He's, you've got to get him on. He was the funniest guy. I, ever. Should, I think he's back because he's playing for Derry. Ah, he's right well, now, isn't he's, he? he's back because they only play like during the it's summer. Like a short season, don't they? Aye, so he's back. So I'm going to try and get him on. You oh, can come back would, in as well. Oh, would you enjoy that? Oh, I'd love that. <laughs> I don't think I could have the mic on though. Oh my god, we need to turn his down <laughs> massively. The the noise of his voice, man, and his laugh as well. Oh, honestly, can make you laugh at anything. So you left, obviously, we all left school in fourth year and then became full-time football, wasn't it? It was, aye. Aye. So, so around that time, do you remember Do you remember much about, you know, go, that the transition from um, like just being a youth player into full-time? I remember. Do you remember much about it? Do you remember we were all coming in after training? I think it was, like, the best players at that time were, like, Joe and Nizzy. Yeah. They were coming in saying, I <laughs> uh, they were the first to I know you're right I, they, they, there was a group of players who were offered first yeah and then it just kind of felt with, like I remember I think KT told the story but he was like la- one of the last ones yeah. they were offered yeah. at the time because uh, I, I would say we, we had a really good age group in terms of talent there was a a lot of people said that to me I, like, I, even like did it, coaches did you think that, that? I think uh, every age group's good at Celtic yeah. isn't it yeah. I thought the one above us was brilliant yeah, it was. Players like Conor McManus, Liam Aye. Henderson and yep. all that. They were really good players. Cal Waters as yeah. well. So, uh, I just think every age group, especially. I'm not, yeah, exactly. You're not going to be at Celtic unless you're a talented player, Decent, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, uh, pretty much every age group is good, as you said. Yeah, and I just, everyone was just so buzzing. Remember, to leave school, yeah. get your first wage. And it was with Celtic. And you were with Celtic. Celtic. It was, it was, the, it was the dream, wasn't it? It, it was, was the at the time. It was Aye. incredible. And that was, I thought that first year was brilliant. Yeah, Barfield. down in Barrafield, that was the making of you, wasn't that it? It was. Boy to man. That's what they were, we were talking about that the other day at St. John's, actually. The young boys, they don't do it anywhere near. No. I just remember that first year at Barrafield, remember the because, stuff you had to well, do? Well, because you're not, you're not the, the first team aren't there, you're down at Barrafield, you're you're not part of like, you're the only age group there, yeah. Well, we were the only age group there, you know, the rest of the kind of, so you're, we're 16, 17 at that time? Uh, 16. 16 yeah. at that time, anyone that's 17, 18, 19 is up at Lennox Town. And then the first team are up at Lennox Town, so you're just there as a as a squad by yourself down at Barrafield doing every single job, just basically kind of yeah. fed, fending for yourself. What what do you remember of of Barrafield? I remember, I remember Joe and Nizzy complaining in the full first year because they were on the water. Remember, <laughs> I said, <laughs> had well, had, two well, so what what were the jobs? There were some boys in the water. Like some jobs were easier than others. I don't remember having that difficult. I can't even remember having a job, so it can't have been that difficult. I think me, you and. Brez will get the good one. The Remember we kit bag? Kit bag, aye. Me, you, me, you and Jack Breslin. Because you liked us, I think. Aye, that was it. That was it. Hugh McGovern, the kit man. And he fa- he favourited jobs uh, to people that he well, liked. If you were nice to him. Exactly. You know, if you were respectful to him and all that, he would he would help you out. But Because uh, I think Joe used to wind them up, didn't he? Aye, he was so a wind up man. used to get the worst job. Aye. But, uh, I'm pretty sure we also might have had coaches' boots. Aye. Aye, S. and and see if you were raging at the coach one day. Do you remember just dunking his boot right into the bucket full of water? <laughs> full of water. Can you do that? It was my dad. Was that just me? <laughs> <laughs> Can you sort my own dad? Boots? True, true, true. You could do that, but I could. I could. could. I remember one story about somebody soaking boots. Oh, listen, we we we'll might come to that. we might get on to that. That came later at Lennox Town Aye. with uh, yeah, we still cleaning boots at Lennox Town, and whew, I gave them a good clean though. You did. Gave them a good clean. So down at Barrafield, it's a kind of making of you, isn't it? I As thought it, it was brilliant. Aye, because there was a few. I remember uh, LD, like uh-huh. Luke Donnelly, uh-huh. Fikra, and that were uh-huh. still with oh, us. Oh yeah, I don't know. A couple of the older boys. Aye, um, and that that was brilliant, wasn't it? They were so good, weren't they? They Cause, just because they'd been there and done it. They knew what was expected. Aye. They were good guys as well. They're brilliant guys, weren't Aye. they? They brought everyone together. I thought because they weren't like they were a year older. They could easily said. Like trying to look down on yeah, exactly. Bit, but the, the it was a le- level, level kind of playing they, field, wasn't it? They were brilliant, weren't they? Because I remember LD had his car. Oh, yeah. And he used to be the first one to get in his car to yeah, drive yeah, us yeah. for food. Well, that was it, because head. because Barrafield was here, you train, and then Celtic Park here, where oh, we got food, we got lunch. It was the worst thing ever, wasn't it? But, mate, like, how much did boys just want Because he'd been training all morning, you'd be starving, and it was like a race to get to, uh, and to you Celtic couldn't Park leave until Huey had the minivan aye so and Huey, Huey was so slow oh, so slow incredible he'd be making himself cups of tea just he'd be sitting in that wee room and then he'd, he'd disappear aye. and he'd be like where the fuck is Huey where is he there's nowhere to go exactly where is he I actually remember some boys just running along the road just back to get I their lunch I remember one day I 
Um, was, it no, was it Bruni? Was it no Bruni? I think there, there was a few boys. There was a few boys because the who he was taking ages. <laughs> Eventually overtook them. They were running they down the road, <laughs> fully clothed in Celtic kit. No, 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 mate. How? Remember how hard but, the training but I, was then? I think the reason was, I think that race was because there was like a certain amount of bread rolls <laughs> was, at remember. Celtic Park. And if you weren't first there, you were not getting a bread roll. And uh, the bread roll, it sums up the, the, the quality of maybe the food that we were getting. The, the, the highlight was a bread roll. Is that unfair to say? I, I thought there was some really good lunches. There was, there was, wasn't there? I think it was more the first come, first serve, wasn't it? Because if you didn't, if you were last there, there wasn't, yeah, much, there wasn't left, much left. And it was always... Because I remember you used to race off the minibus. It used to be a Aye. fright for the front <laughs> front seats. And if you were up the back, mate, you were oh. last for lunch. Uh, and I remember sprinting up the stairs at Parkhead. <laughs> that was so long. It's funny, you're just like a wee guy, wee 16, 17-year-old, just like, all you care about is football. You're getting a bit of money. You're getting paid for it. You're, you're at Celtic and you're just starving. You just want your lunch. Everything was pretty simple then, wasn't it? But having said that, you were scunner. Remember how, that's what I was saying, how hard the training was at Banfield? Yeah, it was. It used to be relentless. We used to go, remember we used to do the gym before training? Aye. Well, mate, mate I, I remember there was one stage it'd be gym before training, training, yeah. then it would be gym after training, Same. and then you'd, you'd go back to the pitch, pitch sometimes. Or you would do pitch and then go back and do the gym, and it's like five o'clock. Or I know this sounds ridiculous because a lot of people work nine to five, but that is true. But to be working out, like training Constant from night. nine till five, it's like you were knackered. Well, to be fair, we were. What time did we get to Barryfield? It was at eight. It was a short. It was an early start, mate. It was eight to about five. We mate, we done hundred percent. 100%. And, I, and I, some boys got the bus. Obviously, not, not many of us could drive. I used yeah. to get the train, so I'd be leave, you'd leave the house at like seven, you're back about six. Yeah. It's crazy. I was really lucky, to be fair, because I was where Huey dropped us off. I was close. But see, like people like Boydie, maybe you, KT, and Aye. KT would get dropped off by Huey, then he'd have to get another bus. Oh, uh, really? From where he was dropped off? Huey, K- KT stays around here, doesn't Or he used to stay I around here? He used to stay, I used to stay around here, but Huey wouldn't drop him at his door because he had a few boys. To, he always uh, dropped uh, Irish boys at their door. They he? loved Irish boys, but they, they deserved it. Uh, They're away from home. They deserved uh, a little bit extra, didn't they? But having said that, like a few of you had to do some travelling. Aye, because so. I used to get the train from Bears Den into town so and then picked up. Sh- shifty as well, remember? Aye, uh, a few of us in uh, town, um, and we all got picked up and then bust into... Uh, Aye, it was it was probably and then you probably forget how I I, I was thinking about it the other day actually it's like it's hard work it was almost hard work to get to training aye, it was. and then you had Both like uh, you had so much on during that day yeah. um, but to be honest mate personally I look back at those times and they were class they were class weren't it's they the funniest times I've ever it ever was had. fun some of the stuff that happened in the changing room I know that was incredible it was just wild wasn't I it I think it was because it was so it wasn't it tough obviously in comparison to the other things but in terms of like being in a football environment yeah the amount of work you were doing. The amount of jobs you were doing. Yeah. It was freezing in Barrafield. Yeah. The showers were terrible. <laughs> they were the showers were well, the thing was, if you didn't, it was always a, a, always a fight for first in because, again, they would be freezing. I, the hot water would just go off after about half an hour. <laughs> Not even half an hour. You were lucky <laughs> if you get 10 minutes out of it. Aye. Okay. But no, nah, they, were, they were good times, man. They were really good times. And I tell you what, the one thing I do remember as well is you and your, the amount of work that you put in. Obviously, we were working hard. Yeah. Um, but, Every si- I think it was every single day I would see you because at the time who was the coach taught it was Mio, Mio I was Mio Tommy. Mio and Tommy Aye. it was Mio and Tommy and every single day after training I would see you we'd be finished the session I'd be like I'm oh, not that's me I'm away from my bread roll uh, I'm away to sprint along to Celtic Park you'd be up to Mio Mio can we do a wee bit and every single day mate honestly you would be doing you know 5, 10, 15, 20 minutes just yeah. but a lot of the time it was like technical work wasn't it yeah you remember that Aye. I just used to love technical work. I think mm-hmm. I'd done too much at the end. I should have mm-hmm. done other stuff. But what, t- at that age, though, so you're 16, what like what brings you to to do that? I think first, I think I was desperate to play for Celtic. Uh-huh. I think I was really like, I thought I had an opportunity. Everyone thinks <coughs> I'm here because my dad. I thought I'm going to give this everything I've got. I've got a brilliant opportunity, uh, which in a way I think it hampered me because I'd done far too much. See, looking back, mm-hmm. like, I was knackered. Yeah. I remember like warming up for training and I felt like done. Yeah. But I thought this was normal cause yeah. like, uh, but I think it was, I think it was just a desperation to do well. Maybe looking back, I sh- shouldn't have done as much. Yeah. But, uh, so p- a part of it was one to prove to people that you weren't there just because your dad was there, but also just because you, th- you saw it as such a good opportunity. You could play for Celtic if you, if you did this work, is that the way you saw it? Aye. I did. I did. Uh, and do, do you think obviously you said you, you probably did too much but do you think do you think you think you improved as a player from doing the, the extra extra work I think it did because I didn't like obviously you all played with Celtic 
from a lot younger. Yeah. Whereas I was at boys' club, you know, it's like you're yeah. just playing with your mates. It's a laugh, but it's a different level when you try to you're trying to actually mm-hmm. become a Celtic player. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I think I had to do a lot of catching up in that. Uh, but I think, like I said, it, it hampered me in the end. I think yeah. because. I was taking too much out myself, and the one thing I needed to do was develop physically. Yeah, and I think I was I was killing myself. Like I remember John Curry, mm-hmm. sports scientist. Yep. he used to keep Great telling guy. me, "You're doing far too much." Oh yeah, and I used to think, "No, aye, aye, aye. I'm trying." He's to, just saying this. He's I'm, just I'm, saying do, this. I'm doing plenty. I'm, I'm doing. I'm not even doing enough yet. I'm trying to do extra, but uh, uh, looking back, it's easy to say in hindsight. But I wish I'd listened to him. Wait, wait. When did you realise you were doing too much? I get released for Celtic. Aye. Yeah. So, and what you're 20, 21 then? I get released late. Aye. That was that was a tough time, I think, because I was looking across and seeing players my age playing maybe 50, 60 games in the SPFL for mm. Aberdeen, Murrow, St Johnston, even in the Championship. So, I think, I'd, I think a wee bit of me realised I've done too much here because I knew times when, to me, you don't do a lot yeah. and you feel great. Yeah. I, I kind of eventually yeah. clicked for me. Do you know what I mean? But I, th- I feel like I, I was I was similar in that I didn't do as much as you, but I was always trying to do a bit more. And I, I sometimes got in the mind, I got in the mindset which was maybe a bit unhealthy in that, like, see if you missed something that you wanted to do, you then felt guilty. guilty. You felt not guilty. You felt as though you hadn't done enough. And maybe if you didn't feel good, it was like, oh, it's because I didn't do that. Yeah. So it's, it's sometimes a bit of a bad cycle. Aye, you get in a vicious cycle. Aye, aye. But when I look at like the best example is KT. Mm-hmm. When he trained with the first team, he was 110%, oh, yeah. wasn't he? He was at it. And I think that was, I was doing extra and I was going up with the first team and I was feeling a bit tired. Yeah. So then that's hampering my chances of doing well there. Yeah. So that I, I think that was that was my regret, I think, yeah. for being younger. Yeah. Because th- there is a time and a place to do extra stuff, though. Yeah. 100%, 100% and it's so important. But as you said, as you touched on KT, like from my memory, I don't remember him really staying every single day after training through more but as you said when he did actually train it was like 110% his, intensity uh, for application like he left nothing in the tank but his but his attitude yeah. was brilliant when, yeah. it, when you when you look back at it and you think like how aggressive oh, yeah. in training he was and how like mm-hmm. his, sta- his standards were always up there do you yep. know what I mean I mm-hmm. don't think he got the credit when he was younger because he was a really good player Yeah. Uh, so obviously that was uh, that was something I'd wish but I think it's easy saying that now, but when you're doing the extra, it's, it's so important, I mm-hmm, think. Mm-hmm. Especially if you're trying to... Some people are naturally gifted physically, technically, do yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. But I think to even get closer to them, you need to do it. So, do you, per- personally, in your opinion, do you see yourself... like What, what do you see your, your, your strengths being? What do you see the areas that you had to work on? Uh, I think always my strengths was technically, like my left foot in that. I was mm-hmm. always good at passing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was I was always aggressive in that, mm-hmm. uh, but I think I didn't merge it well with being a defender. I think I remember thinking being a good defender was Cruyff turning people. I ball s- played. I, do, I, re- I remember those Cruyff turns. <laughs> I, I used to do it all the time. I used to do Cruyff turn the striker about five times. And I think <laughs> after I'm brown here and I get in the car, my dad was like, "What are you terrible, doing?" Because your dad also was a centre back. He was a centre back. Yeah, but that's something I had to learn. Was like the harsh reality is. Most times, being a good defender is being a good defender. Being and a defending. good defender, yeah, and that's what I've learned playing first team football. Uh, so I think really I had to get stronger physically. I think it takes you time to develop as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, exactly, I mean. exactly. Uh, I mean, I would say I think there's a lot of boys, 16, 17, 18, who are probably looking inside the mirror like, "Come on, what's happening here?" Yeah. But it's not until maybe twenty twenty one you start to properly kind of take your body takes kind of fully, fully, yeah. fully, fully grown and stuff. Especially for your legs and that, I think. Aye, unless you're. Gifted, like yeah, unless you're ge- gen- genetically, genetically gifted, I, yeah. I. Um, so basically, ba- it was then Barryfield for one year, mm-hmm. and then up to Lennox Town. Yeah. And what was the to you? What changed between Barryfield and Lennox Town? Some players, some players leave, some players drop off, some players move up to Lennox Town. It was almost like a progression, wasn't it? It was, I. Uh, it was. I think it was. Whether it was a fair progression or not, you know, some boys left because they wanted to. Some boys get released, didn't they? Yeah. Uh, and I think was so. It? It's almost like a filtering process. Barrowfield, like you, you get you get thrown into this kind of different environment. If you survive, you keep going, yeah. kind of thing. And I also think it's difficult at that because you got to remember there's already players in that squad. So you can't imagine you have four 
centre backs or yeah. four what, what, left do, backs. Do you mean moving up to the moving up? Do you know what I mean? It's a I, big squad because basically we were moving up from under seventeen to under twenties, weren't we? Pretty much, wasn't uh-huh. it? And it was a big you boys that there's a lot of age groups above you. There was what was a Phil Twards, it's Paul George and that day, weren't they? So when we first went up, they were there. So it was Paul George, Twards, who the else brothers, was there? Uh, Owner Con. Well, he was kind of first team. Went to Stuart Finlay. Aye, Stuart Finlay. It was that was brilliant. John Herman, that was uh, there, wasn't there? Uh, Brudin. 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 Uh, did he not leave though as we went up? Aye. I think he did. You reminded me of Zlatan. Not not as a player, but just as his personality. Like he was so confident, Aye, wasn't he? He was. He was but I remember doing well. some unbelievable things, did he not? Aye. They were good players, weren't they? They were brilliant, aye. And they were really good, weren't they? Was, I, I know they, they were, were as well. That that was the one thing, like, um, apart from maybe one or two, but I would say the majority, for me anyway, my experience, that any any older player, like, usually pulled you up, get, helped you out, were welcoming, yeah. that kind of thing. Because you, you basically moved into the reserve dressing room, didn't you? No, I remember we were another one. For oh, so because there were so many of us. There were so many, there was too many players. Aye, because you basically get first team dressing room, reserve dressing room, and then it was like us it who was just moved up. Aye. And then basically, again, it's another filtering process. Slowly, boys start to move in, but up into the reserve one. Yeah, as the boys for the reserves kind of move, move into on, the yeah. first team yeah. as well. Yeah. Uh, so, so, so what was the main difference between Barrowfield and Lennox Town uh, for you? I think it was just brilliant being at Lennox Town. Yeah. It? First we, team were there. First team were there. You'd walk by them in the corridor and that uh, canteen. Not not sure whether to say all right or just just look at down them. and walking. <laughs> Some wee noise comes out as you try to speak to one of them. All right. <laughs> She's a nervous wee guy. The last one, because Lennox Town members, you come out the reserve change. If you see Aye. somebody coming, oh to, man, I used, to long, jump, I used to jump back in the a change. long corridor, wasn't it? Like you'd see them, you clock them, you'd be like, oh, I'm gonna, am I gonna go? I used to peek my head out to see who was coming up. <laughs> I honestly did. I used to jump mate, back in. Even up the stairs, like when you came out the canteen, the hallway was massive. Aye. And if you started walking along, there was a point where it was just like you'd be walking along for so Looking long. Someday. And it's like, they'll, they'll look up to and see. anyone coming from that end, like the opposite side, was all First gaffer, team. assistant, aye, aye, aye. office staff, oh, all that. The best Horrible. one was walk by my dad. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? How are you doing? Ask him what's for dinner. <laughs> <laughs> brilliant, brilliant. So up at Lennox Town, um, what was the what was the kind of difference in terms of? I think there was a big difference in terms of the like the food you got. There was the canteen. Everything was in the one place. The gym was in the one place. Canteen was in the one place. Changing room, great pitches, everything was at your dis- disposal. I think it was a really good, for me anyway, you'll probably agree, it was a great opportunity to then make the most of that environment as well. I think that's why one of the best things about being at a club like Celtic, especially in the youth, is you get exposed to all that. Yeah. I think it's, it can be dangerous if you get used to it and get yeah. comfortable with it. But yeah. I think if you actually you know, take it in your stride and use it a lot, uh-huh. it would be brilliant. Uh, I mean, you even had like food. even had the ice baths and the pool and all that kind of stuff oh, for we recovery. Used, we used to wrap it with them. Didn't <laughs> we? We'd, be, we'd be doing a recovery session, then use the ice baths for no reason. <laughs> they, they were a nightmare to get to because you had to go through the first team dressing room as oh, well, uh, man. That was, <laughs> <laughs> and especially if the first team were wanting in them. I know, I know, so I know, I know, I know, I know. But uh, no, I, th- I thought it was, and I remember as well. We were all excited going up because remember it was it was Stevie Frail and John Kennedy, John Kennedy. was there, but then. They were fantastic, weren't they? John moved to the first team uh-huh. with Ronnie and that, uh-huh. didn't he? So, Steve, but, Steve, who moved up with Stevie? I think it was just Stevie for a while. Was it just Stevie for a while? Yeah. The he team was brilliant. Ah, that. really good, Loved really good. It. He was fantastic. He, he was, was really re- good with the, with the. I thought he was really good at managing everyone as well. Yeah, because it was. I wouldn't say it was hard on us, but it always made fair. Because remember, a few times like I'm quite feisty, so I was like arguing with a few of the older boys and uh-huh. that. And I remember he pulled me after training and said, "Look, I appreciate Aye. you're competitive. I like it, but." These boys are two years older. Yeah. And that was, well, I was six, 17. Aye, and they were 19. Up. Aye, aye, aye. So you wouldn't think getting all that as you move into a first team, but yeah. when you're at, he's like, no, you've got to aye, aye, aye. just keep your mouth shut and that. Yeah, yeah. Which I thought was really good. A who, good who, learning. Who, who, who were the ones you were having a go at? Any, anyone I, I know? I wouldn't say I was having nah. a go at. I have no position to have a go at. Uh, no. Nah. But you know what I'm like if, like if I just if Stevie or something made a decision or that oh aye uh, aye aye I aye. get so you'd be angry uh, angry in the wee games but I think it was uh, I think it was maybe Jack Snuffin or something fizzed one into me and I took a great touch but it was uh, and I took an extra touch and passed it aye and it was three touch and I'm like what am I, <laughs> how am I supposed to do that in two touch <laughs> but no, it was. But there was a big step up from the tr- from the training battlefield, like not not in terms of the intensity and stuff, but just quality because you were in now with guys that were 18, 19, 20, 21 uh, who were really really good technically as well. Brilliant. Uh, I just, 
And it just made you, it made you raise your game again. Made didn't you want it? to be better, aye. Because I just remember like passing drills and that. They always used to fire them, didn't aye, they? Aye. I always remember we Paul McMullen. Mm-hmm, he mm-hmm. always used to fizz them and go aye, again because that's how he played when it. He was brilliant at it. Aye. Uh, but that it was, it was a really good environment as well. And still, when you first moved up there, you're still doing the jobs, aren't you? The jobs were hard. Do you know think they were harder? But, well, you, you then had two jobs. You had to do all the first team stuff, and, and then you had to do all the twenty stuff as and well. There was only seven. There wasn't many. There was less of us, obviously. Moved up. Uh, I, I don't even think it was ten years, was there? So you'd spend pretty much the best part of an hour of your morning sorting out kit, wouldn't you? Oh, we were in for what? I tell you, uh, were you not on the water in Powerade for the first team as well? I'm pretty sure you forgot it. So I get the easy job at Barryfield and get the worst. Uh, it was a bad job, wasn't it? Because you had to do the pitches at the op- opposite end of Lennox Town. Aye, 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 aye. So for anyone who knows Lennox Town, it's, it's some trek down aye. for the bottom you'd, pitch you'd to want, the first You'd want team. pitch one. Sometimes the first team would be on the far away pitch, <laughs> and then you'd have to take the stuff all the way down to the 20s pitch as well. Best one was Astro in pitch one. Oh, that's good. You just go across the easy, road. Easy, easy. But aye, and the worst one was wee goals. Wee goals, because they, so, they were heavy, just awkward. They were horrendous. You only carry one at a time, couldn't you? Aye, and... Nobody would help you. You know aye. what it's like in our team. Aye, aye, aye. Nobody, Nobody was, was willing to help you. anyone. No. Um, and then as well, we, we rotated the. F- oh no, everyone was assigned a first team player for boots, weren't they? Aye. Or you, you had we, we were assigned three three players, weren't three we? Three players each, wasn't it? That was brilliant. Who did you have? I, I think I had Van Dyke. Good name drop. Good, good pair of boots to have. Stefan Johansson. I t- hope you took really good care of them. And do you know who I think I had as well? Mm. And I'm speaking to him now about it, Effie. Because Effie's oh, at St Johnston. Oh, right, did you clean his boots? I'm, not I'm sure it was Effie because I had a third player. Because some aye, boys aye. only had two. Aye, aye, aye. And some of had three. Uh huh. I think it was either Effie or Mikael Lustig. Uh-huh. Uh huh. I'm just trying to remember who handed us the money. At aye, because that was the best bit, wasn't it? Oh, 200 quid off per, per player. It was 200 quid per player, wasn't aye, it? it was, some of ended up with 600. 600, aye, uh, aye. I only had, I only had two players' boots, and I think one of them ended up leaving, so I only had one. My yeah, favourite guy. Your favourite guy. <laughs> but uh, I remember somebody though was gutted. I don't want to. I can't remember the first team player. But I remember somebody got a side strap instead of the one. <laughs> <you remember? laughs> a side strap. But I mean, do, do you not remember um, Dr. Richter refusing to pay whoever money. it was his boots? Aye. He was in our dressing room. He moved into our dressing room, aye. aye. He, was, he, was a, he was a funny guy, wasn't he? He was loaded, though. What was he called? The Cannon. Nicknamed The Cannon because he used to blast foot. shots, didn't he? Oofed, aye. aye he, was, he was cake. But I remember. Was it no uh, Bruni had to go and pull him up? Aye, aye, aye. But he, st- he still refused. I remember I remember seeing him having an argument. Did he was like, I'm not paying. I'm not paying. Because he'd been moved out of the first team dressing room and stuff, he probably felt a bit like... Aye. But then he was in our dressing room, what a guy he was. Oh. Absolute gentleman, um, mate. Unbelievable he guy. He was telling us everything about I know, everyone, mate. I know, I know. Interesting stories. Oh, aye. He was... He was good, mate, but... And, and, and also, though, he, he, was a, he was a good professional. You know what I mean? He never, he never really... <laughs> no, mate... I'm gonna give him credit. In training, he always, he always, they always put in a shift. No, he did actually. Like, you know, he, I forget that. You think did. some first team players would come down in this in this process and just chuck it, but he still. He actually turned into like one of our team. Didn't he? <laughs> he did die. He actually tried to get with the Christmas night out. <laughs> <laughs> didn't put any money towards it. <laughs> but I remember uh, when Ronnie came in with the, the pre-activation in front of the mirrors. Oh, that was weird, wasn't it? I remember Dave Hartley. Uh huh. Asked Dirt to do it and Dirt wasn't doing it right and they started swearing and that. Do you know what I remember? What that? Dave did? No, Dirt started swearing at uh, Dave because Dave, Dave had asked him to do it and he stopped I, doing it. Mean, I forgot about how weird was that though? Nah, in front of the mirrors. Yeah, because they get, they get the big mirrors put up against the wall and the indoor, like big indoor, indoor, indoor Astro and everyone would be sidestepping in these bands. But l- literally the on the spot, remember? It was, it was, it was a fast a, feed. It was a weird routine as well, it was wasn't it? It was hard as well, wasn't it? And then you're straight out straight out of the train, wasn't it? Uh, Aye. But you didn't have to warm up though. That was it. There was that no was warm good. up. That, was, what, that was the warm up. Aye. It was actually maybe good. Aye, it's weird, man. I forgot about that. Aye. So, obviously, Celtic. How was um, kind of like game time and stuff around the around the twenties? Uh, I mean, I didn't play for the first year because you'd like a few years didn't play cause positions. Mm. So you maybe I think you played quite a lot, didn't you? Because Darnell moved I up did, the first team. I did, because Darnell moved up with the first team and then there the, the wasn't really any other right back. back yeah, because I remember like you, Maka, Joe, uh-huh. Nizzy. We played quite a bit, aye, yeah. aye. But obviously there was like... It, it, it just it didn't, it almost wasn't dependent on how well you're performing. It did a wee bit, but it was more to do with like where where did they need a player? Yeah, aye. Because you, you, who did you have playing in the 20s at that time? Do you remember? Owen? I, Owen was first team, but uh-huh. he played... Sometimes. Like they used to play first team players, yeah. didn't they? I think... Stu was there. Stu was still there. He went out on loan. Philip Tarzik played sometimes, I'm sure. Fikra. Fikra. Fikra played. Yeah, Fikra played as well. Yeah. 
I feel like I'm maybe missing someone. Uh, nah, I think I think that's I think that's right. Um, so obviously up at Lennox Town, it was brilliant. And then, what age were we when we first when you first went out on loan? Who was the manager then, and and when when was that? I think I was I think I was eighteen, maybe just turned because my birthday's in June, so I think it was maybe nineteen, right? And it was no, it was when Brendan first came. Brendan Rodgers so came in. that was because uh-huh. I remember I was in and around the first team for a while, and I actually thought, oh, I'm doing well here because yeah. I used to like like playing out for the back yeah. all that, and it suited me down to a T. Mm-hmm. But when I look back, like nowhere near. The Wait, level Van Dyke like, is it's no, tough. Van, I think Van Dyke was away. Oh, was he? Just first team football. I was good on the ball and that. Yeah. See, physically. Yeah. Defensively, I had so much to learn. And, mm-hmm. uh, I just remember because I made my debut that year. So he he came in in the summer of twenty sixteen. Was it? He came in summer twenty sixteen, and you made your debut in August twenty sixteen. In the League Cup, I'm sure. In it the was. League Cup, yeah. I was League Cup against Motherwell. Yeah. Scottish League Cup, August five, August twenty sixteen. Like four one or five one. I don't know. I, I didn't. I didn't get the score on my Cause Wikipedia. I, I never buzzing because they were hammering. Aye. Model and, you and you came on. If I, I remember actually, I was watching it. And you came on. Did someone else come on? That Tony. Day? Tony, Tony came on as well. I think that right. was his second or third appearance. Ah right. Okay. Okay. So by that. So by this stage, you're maybe in around the first team training with the first team. I went away pre season. I was training every other day, pretty much with uh-huh. the first team. But sometimes that's because of numbers, though. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. Remember that because. Uh, Charlie McGrude left that year. Charlie McGrude left. Because I remember he was in training and the only reason I get mad because he had left to go to Blackburn, I think right. he went to. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then like I think two weeks later I was in I was in the squads and then I got on the bench one uh-huh, time. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Uh, so you made your debut obviously in August, which is amazing. I mean, how did that feel? Uh, it was brilliant, but at the time it was just like I don't think I fully appreciated it because you're like, ah, right. How can I aye, aye. try to get another? How can I play again? Here? How can I play How again? Can I get better? Mm-hmm. Uh, which was maybe the wrong mindset to have at the time. Like I said, uh, nah, just, I, I think that's a good mindset to have. Aye, but I think th- one thing I've learned is appreciate what you're achieving at okay. the time because it's uh, I get helps you in a way as well. So, so what happened from that period from August to January? Did you you didn't go out on loan? Did you? No, I I just came back down to the twenties. I think because uh-huh, uh-huh. then. You and at this point you're 19 yeah because yeah. then you proper start getting into the season and then mm-hmm. uh, I don't know if they signed someday uh, but I'd stopped training with the first team as much right and I remember being like I was still in around it but I just remember Brendan Rodgers was great with everyone oh yeah so he always made you feel part Aye. of something Aye. Uh, he's, he's the best manager I've encountered yeah I I'll think like. man manager yeah. just kn- knew how to handle people and deal with people incredible wasn't he mm-hmm it's so incredible. in the January you went out on loan to Inverness. Inverness. Yeah, they were in the Premiership at the time. Mm-hmm. So I remember that being like a pretty. Cause that was a really good move. A brilliant. Because I remember saying to Ren Rogers, if there's even a chance of me getting another appearance, I'd love to stay. And he said, look, there probably would be towards the end of the season mm-hmm. when mm-hmm. the league's wrapped up. Do you know what I mean? You maybe get on as a sub, but he said there's no point. This is an opportunity to go and play in yeah. the top league in Scotland. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and it was Richie Foran at the time right. who'd seen me playing against Inverness in youth. Okay. So he he really wanted me to go there. So uh, and you moved up there then in the January. Yeah, in the I think it was maybe the middle of January towards the end. Of it. Okay. So, but that was brilliant. And how many games did you play there? I think I got. I think I got twelve or thirteen. Twelve or thirteen games I, I I in the Premiership. It's fin- yeah, yeah it's ten, fantastic, isn't it? Ten starts, maybe. Mm-hmm. Ten starts, maybe two sub appearances, I think. And that was your first taste of proper first team football, first team changing room, first team environment, like yeah. reg- like regularly. Regular, yeah. And it was. Uh, Did that open your eyes at all? Uh, to the football, because Inverness we were eleventh when I joined. Right. But it was I can't remember who the other team was, but we're fighting relegation. Yeah. We ended up getting relegated that year. Mm-hmm. But I just remember thinking. Like, so a lot of defending. No, because Inverness were a, they All right. played good football. Uh-huh, they had like uh-huh. Vigors, Polworth, yeah, Greg yeah, yeah. Tansy, some really good, good footballers, but we just couldn't like just couldn't win games. I don't mm-hmm. know what, what it was, but uh, it was more just to like I come back to like, the physicality and the speed. Of it. It's, yeah, see when you go into like the first team, it's and, totally different, isn't even it? Even in I think League One and the Championship in Scotland as well. I don't think they get enough credit because mm-hmm. there's a lot of really good players there. there. Is. But it's the 
it's like the speed it is 100 yeah. miles an hour in it yeah. it's end to end constantly yeah. That's, it's kind of Scottish football though isn't it it yeah, is very high nothing, intensity nothing to like what we played it with Celtic yeah we used yeah. to oh. drop off get the ball for the goalie pass out maybe crazy, step mate. in crazy I, I, was, I played right back I played right wing pretty much for years mm-hmm. because you didn't really need to defend you honestly yeah. you honestly didn't you might odd, odd time somebody would counter attack you'd win the ball back and you just go again Aye. you were so, so high it was a completely different style of football Aye. which I think really opened my eyes yeah uh, and it was my first time living away from yeah. home as well how was that it was it was no bad. I was I was trying to save the pennies. Aye, aye, I was, aye. I was so tight. Would you like to admit to everyone that you could potentially be? The t- should, am I allowed to call you the tight the tightest man in Scotland when it comes to cash? Or are you just a smart smart guy? Uh, I used to be really to tight. I think Callum Booth took the title. Callum the title. Booth, aye. Callum Booth. I, I, he listen, you can't call man. Callum Booth. Out. He's not even here. The man's not even here. <laughs> He'll need to come on and, and back himself. I'm sure he will. I'm but sure he will. I, I'm not going to lie. I might agree with you. Aye, it could be. I um, agree with you. He's bought me a coffee before, though. So he wants six. I don't think you've ever bought me a coffee. Podcast, <laughs> he wants six expenses. He for, he's traveling <laughs> about a bit distance. Away, well, you're, you're pretty close. That's on your way home, isn't it? Twenty minutes. Aye, that's a lot. aye. Okay, so you spent th- that part of the season in um, Inverness, and then you came back to Celtic again. Mm-hmm. This is now 2018. Yeah. Yeah. No, no 2017. 2017. 2017. And so what happened? You came back for pre-season, and then I've got here. You joined St Mirren. St Mirren, yeah. In September, that's quite late. So what, what was going on around that season? Because uh, I thought, I remember, because Chris I was out on loan right. at Kilmarnock okay, at the time, yeah, so yeah, the yeah. two of mm-hmm. us were out on loan. And I remember reading something like it was one of us were coming back uh-huh. to but, get a first team spot. But So you went out on loan to St Mirren in September? Mm-hmm. So see, see before that, that's quite late to go out on loan, was, isn't it? I think it was emergency loan. Emergency it loan? It was after the window, obviously. Right, okay. Because uh, I thought I'd come back and I'd been around the first team uh-huh. again. But I just remember coming back and been nowhere. Like, I only went with the first team for pre-season because somebody pulled out. Right. Uh, and I think I, I just remember straight away thinking, like, that's me. Okay. That's me done. I think at Celtic, I can just kind of feel it. Uh, and then. But you was, still had one year left. Still had one year left, but you kind of know. Yeah, you, you know do. what I mean? Because there was a lot of centre-backs, a lot of good ones as well at the club at the time. Uh, so, and then... I, th- I thought I was just staying in the development team for mm-hmm. that, well, at least until January. And then I think St. Mirren had a few injuries or something. And uh, I think Jack Ross phoned up and asked if I could go. I think I only ended up playing three, four games there, yeah. maybe. Yeah. So it was just a. And did you only stay there until January? Just there until January. Yeah. And, and then I went and on. And how, 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 was, how was St. Mirren? How was that? Was that different from. What, were they in the championship? Aye, they were. Flying in the championship. They were flying in the, the championship. Time. Was aye. that this? Aye, they were really good one season. Is that, that Lewis Morgan was there? Yeah, when Morgan. Aye, because well, I was on loan at Dumbarton that season. Yeah. Aye, and probably would have played against you. You ended their unbeaten run at home. I ah, so we I did. We won. Aye. we won. Was it one 0 Sent off. It was one 0 I I get someone. Well, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't Somebody get someone you. off. Someone elbowed me. Aye, I remember oh. it. It was a red guys card. like elbowed me actually. That's a, a, That was the aye. first of the elbows. Who was he? He was a Greek. Left back, yeah, Stelios. Dimitri. Stelios, aye, aye, aye. aye. He was sent. He was sent off, wasn't he? Yeah. And we won one 0 That was an absolute upset because men were flying up until that point. Aye, and that well, they was, were. Uh, they still flew that after was the that Christmas night out. For for us, oh, aye, for, aye, for, aye, for us as well. Was it? So we we beat the the, the top of the table aye. and we're going straight over to Dublin. It was the best weekend ever. And then, Sim- but aye, because we we saw you in the airport actually. I wasn't there. No, you weren't there. I was leaving. Ah, I right, remember. okay. But the, 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 they were going to Belfast. And we were going to Dublin. Aye. They, they did not look happy. No, because I, I remember, I think Jack Ross came in and was going mental Aye, after it. Try to cancel it. And you, every team worries if, oh. if you get beat or something. And night out's cancelled. Your night out's oh. cancelled. But I, yeah, I think you'd lose the dressing room if you oh, that, aye, so, aye. You um, so then you came back and then you joined... Alawa. Alawa. Yeah, with Jim Goodwin. Jim Goodwin. Oh, that was brilliant. I think that, was, that. I think that was the best, up until last season, I think that was the best three months in my career. It was just... Why? I think... The opposite of coming up to Lennox Town is I was coming out of a proper bubble of professionalism and it was... Because we were Alawa part-time? Alawa part-time. So this is the first time that you'd experienced in part-time yeah. football? Yeah, and we only trained, was it Tuesday, Thursday? Tuesday, Thursday. Remember, me and PJ were on loan there. Tuesday, Thursday, time. that's right, aye. Aye, but we didn't go on the Tuesday because it was just running. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't make us go. But also you had the benefit of still training, training at, at Celtic, Celtic you aye. Train, aye. So you were still full-time, obviously, but... 
it was uh, they were real they were obviously professional, but it was just a, a different atmosphere. Mm-hmm. And you you get to learn like pros that have been like Andy Graham and mm-hmm. that and mm-hmm. older mm-hmm. Neil Parry, guys that are older that you maybe look at for a distance and don't think Much. Oh, they're, they're playing League One with yeah. Brilliant, good players as well, really good players. But I think most importantly, are brilliant guys. They kind of open your eyes up to professional, a different world, but just being nice guys yeah. in a football environment as yeah. well. Always been happy regardless result. Yeah, you know, try to pick yeah. teammates up, uh, especially for young boys. Whereas you're coming from maybe Celtic, where I guess it's cutthroat. But I, I know. But interestingly, I was gonna, I was gonna pick up on what you said there about them being nice guys in that. From coming from Celtic, essentially we were we were all competing against each other to yeah. try and make it to the first team. Like although you're teammates and you are mates, yeah. but there's always there's always an underlying thing of like I hope he actually doesn't do that well because I want to be to doing better than him. I want to be playing. I want to be yeah. training with the first team kind of thing. And you're not first team at Celtic, so you don't speak to the first team players. Yeah, and yeah. You don't speak to people. You get a perception of them, don't you? Aye, definitely. But they're they're all nice guys, but when you walk by them or that and they don't say morning or something, you yeah, start yeah, yeah. Over. <laughs> he's not a nice guy but obviously Aye. he is uh, but I just thought that was brilliant and Jim Goodwin was great for me I think I got I think I got like 23 games cause was it 23 got, games? We, I got a lot in because we got uh, playoffs uh-huh. And, that. Uh-huh. and I think we had a cup game as well I want to say maybe not that was, cha- was that championship as well? no that was League oh, 1 oh that was League so 1 right so promoted to the championship so you did yeah so, so you that did. was brilliant uh, I, I would definitely say just opening up my eyes and that's when I started to become a proper Defender, mm-hmm. like and are you? You're still 19 at this point. Uh, 19 going on. 20. 19 going on 20. Yeah, yeah. and I think because I remember if I'm right that year, so the 2017 to 2018, that was my final year, your final year, and also Joe Thompson's final year. Brendan Pilt was all in and I, so, individually. So basically, you've gone from the squad of 20 at Barrowfield, and it's chop, 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 chop. And now there's only three left. We were the last three, weren't we? Last three. We the only on three. Sta- oh, sorry. Four. KT. Oh, but well, excluding aye. KT, but he wasn't in the same bracket player, as us. N- the club. Aye. Nizzy had just left the season before. We were the final three. And it was basically... But the, the thing that you said at start there, of that season, you knew that was probably your last season. I knew it. You probably... Did you... But you probably always had a bit in the back of your mind, mm, if I do really well, I might get another year or another two years or... I think the funny thing was with me is maybe it's a good thing I was quite mature and I realised like I'm not ready to play with Yeah. I mean, how do you know if you're ever ready to play with Celtic first team? But to play to play at a proper level, I, I knew I had to go and play like maybe sixty, seventy games. Uh-huh. And I think I helped for the experience. my dad's there, he's uh-huh. been there, he's done it. Do you know what I mean? So it's easy for me to say that when he's telling me. Yeah. But I think I'd kinda realised like, no, I need to go out and play yeah. like games. So uh, looking back I wish I'd went on loan sooner. Sooner and played as mm-hmm. as many even you know as like League Two League One yeah is brilliant because how many boys do you go down and uh, see coming down for Celtic Rangers and they hang call oh, and they can't I'm play. going to be the star they can't and do you it. seriously struggle I know it's, I know it's a good level yeah you know what I mean it's tough as well because it's kind of different football isn't it it is <clears throat> it is and uh, I think it's I wouldn't say it's a harsh reality because it is there is good yeah, yeah, yeah. standards and uh-huh, that in uh-huh. it but. Compared to youth football, it is Aye, and, c- and compared to being in at Celtic, where it's everything is state of the art, everything's a lot of things are done for you. Your kit's washed, yeah. your breakfast and lunch are there. Physios, nutritionists, sports scientists, doctors, like everything is there for you. You're looked after. Yeah. And then to come out of that, that's probably the biggest difference. Is that obviously you're still training, you're still playing. It's a, it's decent level. Players are still intense, but it's all the things that you maybe used to think. The like, luxuries. Oh, it's, all, either, it's all the luxuries really, yeah. um, and that's sometimes hard for players when they come out. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't mind that. At yeah. All. That's, I didn't miss that because you can have it, a, it is what it is isn't it you can get your own gym you can yeah. make your own food in that I just I was just so desperate I remember then to just play yeah. football I think interesting what you said as well because I also went out on loan that season when 18-19 uh, and the minute you go out on loan and you start playing it's like shit like I wish I'd done this like the season before the season before that because you, you realise you. You, you love it but you also realise how valuable it is in terms of progressing your personal like profile as a football player yeah, you yeah. know if you've got 30 60 games under your belt you're so much more attractive when it comes to when you're out of contract at Celtic like say for example we played two seasons or I played a season on loan you played a season on loan imagine you played two or three seasons yeah. on loan 
Yeah. But it's difficult because you're a youth player there. You have to play for the youth team as and well. You're desperate to play for Celtic. Though. Exactly. You know exactly. I mean? you're but you're it's desperate to stay around it. It's invaluable going on loan, isn't it? It's so good. And I think that's one thing you realise as well is other managers don't care how well you play with Celtic youth. Mm. It means nothing. Nothing at all. It Ho- holds no real value. Not at all. Maybe a little bit in terms of it shows you've got something about you. Oh, no, but if you're leaving Celtic, I think a manager wants to see how many games has he played at a level yeah. to show he's got experience or he yeah. knows enough yeah. about it. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Because, uh, no, obviously playing with Celtic youth, it's some of the experiences you get is, is brilliant. And incredible. the coaching as well. Coaching you learn so incredible. much about football. Yeah. In terms of as a player, you learn massive amounts and you can get a lot from it if you let yourself, you know, if you listen to, to what's there. Uh, exactly. Um, but in terms of like externally, a manager isn't going to look at all that really. No. He's going to look at how many games you've played. Yeah. And I think one thing as well is you get opened up. I think one good thing at Celtic was they opened you up to being a good person as well. Yeah. I feel like like how strict were they on respect, yeah. yep. everything. Yep. Yep. I, I know they used to do the thing with the handshakes. We used to shake everyone's, everyone's hand, hand when yep. we came in in the morning. Can't mm-hmm. do it anymore, obviously. But but even discipline, we things like with your phone and stuff, you, you weren't really allowed on your phone at the, yeah. the full day at the training ground. Yeah. But I just always, the, the one thing that stuck out was always the kit. Yeah. You could never leave Huey to do the kit on his own. And yep. if you went away somewhere, you would always help. Yeah. I just think things like that are good, especially for young boys, because it sticks in your mind. And, and it keeps you grounded as well, because yeah. you have all these luxuries around you. It's easy to get caught up in that. But yeah. it's like, no, nah, no, nah, hold on a second, kid. Like you're still a kid. Do this, do these jobs, yeah. kind of thing. It keeps you. It definitely keeps you grounded. And definitely benefits you. Hundred percent, mate. It's part of a good upbringing. It is. So you left Celtic. Was that a sad moment for you? Uh, How did you feel? I think it was because it was maybe a sudden crash. Because then you realised. Since I signed, I just count back to how many hours, how many stuff I put in. And then it's not to say it was all for nothing, but it just mm-hmm. kind of, that's it, it's finished. Yep. Uh, but lucky for me, I, th- I think I moved on pretty quickly. Because mm-hmm. I realised, like, right, I've got something else I need to build my career. Because mm-hmm. when mm-hmm. I get released for Celtic, nobody wanted me. Mm-hmm. Only The only reason I got to Inverness was because Brian Rice, who was the assistant, had had me on loan. Oh, yeah. And said to John Roberts at the time, look, yeah. he's worth a punt on. Yeah. And I actually signed there. I didn't know at the time, but I'd signed there to be like third or fourth choice. Oh, really? Back. I think if I'd have signed there at the time. If you'd known that? I would, oh, I don't know where my head would have been at. Yeah. Because it, it, it was a tough time. Yeah. Because cause you're moving up to Inverness as well. Yeah, moving away from my home. Because I was, I thought surely a team in the champ or that would take me. Yeah. And I would get in and then I'd prove myself. Yeah. But it just so happens. The only I obviously wanted me back, uh-huh. but I'd, I didn't want to drop. To you, you didn't want to go part time, yeah. Yeah, uh, even though looking back, it probably would have been good for me. Uh-huh. But I was desperate to stay full time, so I thought. Uh, how, how how difficult is that in between period? You know, from leaving Celtic to not knowing what's going on. Uh, I I can't really remember it being that difficult because you're just thinking like, what team am I going to? Yeah. So I just remember training and that and you're focused on like trying to get fit for whoever mm-hmm. you're going to and mm-hmm. I think it happened I think I was I'd signed in loads of time for pre-season right, like okay. maybe two weeks before uh-huh. I started so I knew where I was going uh, I think more the difficult thing was that I came for Celtic I thought I'm actually an okay a decent player but then nobody wants to sign you Yeah. so then you realise you need to start again yeah yeah. you need to build build again yeah mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so two years there how was the two years so obviously you thought you were going as a third or fourth, or no, you didn't really know you were yeah. going to third or fourth choice. But what happened? What how did it, what unfolded over that that first pre season into into the season? Well, first of all, pre season with John Robertson's a, a pre season like you'll never I experience. It was the <laughs> toughest thing ever. Mate. Was it? It was so hard. So I remember me, Sean Rooney. So so who did you share up? Was it Sean I Rooney or Sean? I was with Tom Walsh. Oh, you shared with Tom Walsh. Walsh. Aye, aye, aye. Aye. great guy as well. Aye. Brilliant guy. So we uh, me him Rooney Angus Beath. Mm-hmm. And Jordan White all signed at the same, right. so we came in the same day, uh-huh. got our flats and all that. Uh, in the first day, we thought, right, pre-season, it's tough, but you'll get a ball. Aye, Sh- straight up to the local park. <laughs> that was it. it was like Trainers. Odd Hill, it's called. Right, and it's just a massive hill all the way down, like all the way around. Uh, yeah, yeah. So you had to. It was that right start. You had to get a timed lap all the way. We done uh-huh. it twice the first time, and that just kept the traders on. Two laps Train, around this I had hill. brand new white trainers. I thought I'm turning up here to go on a <laughs> leisurely jog. It was 
I honestly, is it solid? Mate, it was the toughest was thing it? I've ever done. It was because it's there's no pace setter, aye. there's no time to get in with you. You don't know. And you don't know the route. Aye. A few boys knew the route. Aye, aye, so aye. could pace ourselves. That's it. I remember uh, me and somebody else took off. And I was looking at people behind me like that. Yeah, why are they going so slow? <laughs> and then it just came to this hill. And I just started falling back the way. And boys was it, just so were you just running it. straight up the face of this hill then? So it's like straight up a hill. Uh-huh. There's a f- and once you know it, like we've done it plenty of times. Aye. So you start to get to know the hill. Uh-huh. And there's like a few, like, few gradients and then like a few like, declines right so then you start to pace like, ah, you I'll start to get a feel for here, it and then I can shoot up this hill uh-huh, uh-huh. kind of thing and then we thought right that's mad isn't it that's that out the way so we went to the training pitch there was a track set up what so you've gone you've done the hill then you're back no, the next day. Oh, right, the next day right before it your body's probably in bits after doing the hill, the hill runs that was one thing I said my body was in bits but you don't realise how far you can actually push yourself because you felt terrible seeing you start running Aye. you actually feel <laughs> okay Aye. so it set up a pitch a track round the pitch uh-huh. on a football pitch. It was the most disgraceful thing to happen to a football fair, pitch. That, ever. That, that doesn't sound alien to me because my last few months at Airdrie there, like every single Tuesday, there was a running track set up round the pitch, and that's not what you want to see, is it? I, I, I say it's. I think it's quite common, and it will older school managers, o- older school stuff. I so we done gets you fit though. I think it was sixteen hundreds, twelve hundreds, nine hundreds, eight hundreds, six hundreds, four hundreds. 300s, 200s, 150s, 100s. That was the first two weeks of pre-season, so you'd work your way aye, each day aye. down the runs. What the hell? It was, a th- and we were getting changed at the army base. Oh, right, the there you go. It's Black like boot camp walls, then, no literally boot camp. It was depressing. So how, how, how was that? So you've moved up to Inverness Championship? Yeah. Aye. Yeah. You're thinking, you start a new club, and that's your first few weeks. Like, how is that making you feel? What are, you th- are you thinking, what the hell am I doing here? I think you've not got much time to think it. See, because yeah. like, the changing room, everyone's like slaughtering it and having a laugh. You're like, what Aye, are yeah. we doing here? Aye. Like, you're and too busy having boat. a laugh Aye. about it and complaining that you can't really sit down and think about it. Aye. So it wasn't a... It was, it was bad at the time, but it wasn't like mm-hmm. you thought too much into it. You were just like waking up every day and going and doing it. And how, how was your, your two seasons there from a playing point of view? first three months were terrible. I honestly, I think I thought about leaving. Like, oh, really? Like, chucking it. Uh-huh. Because I went up there, I didn't play a minute. No? I played 12 games with the under-18s. Oh, did you? I went to, if you ever been to Fort Williams pitch? No. <laughs> In fact, mate, you know what? Because I remember, I remember on the phone to you, maybe, and you were telling me that you were away over at date some bus in the middle of the night over to Fort William. <laughs> mate, it was the toughest night. Who, who were you playing? Fort William? Fort William. So under they, under eighteen, they went three years without winning a game. Uh huh. Remember, they never, they never beat record? you. They never beat you. No, mate, we won twenty four now. Oh my god! So there was like me and a few other first team boys had aye. went up in a freezing cold Tuesday I night, remember, two aye. and a half hours. Uh, and Barry what Wilson, mean? the coach, he'd done a forty eight hour golf thing or something, playing golf straight for charity, uh-huh. and he had to drive us. So we're swerving oh all over the place, mate. Oh my god! We man. thought that was the end. Got there. Who was the other first team boys that were up to uh, playing? George Oakley, Charlie Trafford. George was at Hamilton, Charlie was at right, Hamilton. Right, right. Uh, Ricky Calder. Uh, so there was four years, mate. Right, okay. And I just remember. Oh, that's head loss, isn't I it? I was just standing in the middle of the park. We won 24 0, mate. Ah, it was the easiest thing ever. No disrespect. And at that point, though, you're going, what the fuck? I remember I finishing the game uh, and I just phoned my dad, like speaking to him. And Aye. That. I think he could, like, I wasn't even saying. Aye. Much like I was just proper, I was proper scum. It, it, mate, I, mate, shit like that, like it does wear you right down, doesn't it? It That's wears you people, down mentally. People think footballers are like it's a brilliant lifestyle, but Aye. see when it's like lower leagues and that, and it, it's tough. Some of the some of the places you go in some that, some of the a bit, and also and also the treatment. Like you're saying, there is a not not as a bad treatment, but you're saying there's a first team player, and you you want to be part of the first team, play first team games, and you're going up with under 18s to play Fort William on like a Tuesday night. Yeah, like yeah. that's not what you want to do but moments like that it ha- I reckon it happens to every, apart from probably like Messi or Ronaldo right but it happens to probably every yeah, single yeah. player on their way up the ladder like they have moments where it's like pushing you so far down you feel so shit you yeah, feel yeah. so worn down you're like I want to ch- I want to chuck this this is terrible get me out of here yeah, but because you're no special and like everyone thinks they have bad moments and they think oh you get through it and you think oh I'm so uh-huh. Everyone has their moments, didn't they? Everyone. Every football, everyone. everyone in everyday life has them. Yeah. And some people have it a lot worse. Yeah. That's one thing you always kind of remember. Aye. But it's all, I think it's all, with, with these things, it's always relative. Like for you as a football player, that's the worst 
thing that's that the worst could, I've felt that's ever. the worst thing you could be doing that's the worst yeah. thing that's the worst you felt and th- so in terms of like was that bringing you close to like what what like in terms of how like what were you thinking in your head at that time well after the game I was at oh I'll speak to them I'll get released from my contract you want to, you, so you want in your head you were thinking I want to get released well, from I spoke, here I was speaking to my dad uh, and I said oh I'll try to go back to Alloway mm. and he was like oh you won't be able to play uh, with Alloway until January then uh-huh. if you leave the now so there's no point uh, and he's remem- and I just remember him saying to me I just got back to my flat and I remember him saying look the next few months are going to be extremely tough like you've just got to stick in see what happens because uh, there's like you if you're not going to play yeah, there's nothing you can do I, until January you can't, you can't leave somewhere right yeah. now and go and play I think the best thing for me was I was still doing all my extra mm. while that was going on. I, th- I think that's so important, mate, because see, in times like that, I reckon some players do throw the towel in yeah. and then other players, you know, they stick with, you know, with what they know they, they kind of want the outcome's future to be. You stick to the goal, your long-term yeah. goal, and you work away, you work away, you keep going, you don't let those things affect you because they're external. Yeah, well, I thought it can only go up for here, so I thought <laughs> that's the worst that can True. happen. Uh, and did it? I well. So I, what happened? I was do I was always like working hard and doing well in training that, and I think it was uh, was it Brad McKay get injured? I think it was Brad and Cole Donaldson that were playing uh-huh. every week, uh, and then I played in with Cole, and then I don't think I missed a game. So one game you played one. You started one game. One game. We and drew, then that was you. No, we drew with Alawa when Cole was out. Right. But then Cole came back in because him. I think John Robertson really liked him. Right, okay. Uh, was, that was, was his good, son. No, it was his son. <laughs> was, there's, yeah, always, there's always one, isn't it there? Was his no matter son. what team you play at, there's always somebody that. Uh, Cole could do no wrong. The gaffer loves. Paul, Cole was a good player and one of the funniest guys I've played with. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Really funny. But uh, then I came out again, then I went back in, and then ever since then, I played. I think I played every game played every I was game. available for, which I was lucky enough. And I, I always think with football, like the minute things are going wrong, everything's shit in life but then the minute you start playing and you're playing every week there's nothing better is there? Aye there is but we always find something to complain about <laughs> it was, you know it's like in football the moaniest people ever footballers oh like. no they are mate they are for sure and I'm bad for it as well you just think I'm moaning for nothing Aye. I'm just moaning for the sake of it Aye. so tell me see so obviously your dad's a football a football man as well which probably means you can get a lot of you know advice support do you use your dad a lot in terms of like Look like in, in that situation there. Obviously, after that game away at Fort William, like you've had a call with him. Does that reassure you a lot? Because you know your dad's been there and done it and played and experienced these things. Do you look? Do you look to him a lot for guidance, support? What would you say? Uh, I, I would never. I never openly ask for it, but I just think he knows when to. Like, yeah. Do you know what I mean? He doesn't. He never gets too involved, which yeah. is actually really good. Yeah. He always like tries to keep his distance. Yeah. Uh, so I just think he. He gave me pockets of advice when I need it and yeah. to say the right things. Uh, so, but I would never. Sometimes I do about certain things. I would say like, well, "What's your thoughts on yeah. this and that?" But yeah. overall, it's. Uh, d- d- does he ever? Do you think he ever? Obviously, he was a centre back as well. Have you ever? Has he ever been the one, the kind of type to try and coach you in terms of like, Jamie? You know, oh you need, yeah, you need to do more of this. Aye, or, aye? definitely. Always, that, that's priceless. I think. Aye, because I think he always says like. This is what first team managers want. Yeah. And if there's somebody, if your own dad knows, because he's in that line yeah. of business, what other managers want, mm-hmm. there's nothing better. And mm-hmm. you'd be stupid to ignore it, kind of yeah. thing. 100%. Which I actually did. I did, I did ignore it when, at the start because I was so obsessed with. Yeah. Trying well, to be a centre back. Ah, right. Okay. Because in the beginning, he's saying to you like, you need to stop doing as much of that. Do this. Do that. Uh huh. Be more aggressive here. Just clear it, kind of thing. Do you know yeah. I mean? Don't take chances. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, stop doing pirouettes in your own box. <laughs> Brilliant when they come off, but when Brilliant. they don't, <laughs> fantastic when they come oh, off. Shocking. <laughs> and you need to get that trademark, that Cruyff turn. <laughs> Jamie McCart special. I've done it in a few years. All right, so you had those two seasons at Inverness, and then it was time to. So the contract came to an end. How did they no, kind of? No, no. It was, was January. It? Oh, it was January. Yeah, right. right. Tell me, talk, six months. Talk me through that. So obviously things are going well yeah. at Inverness because I only played maybe like six, seven months at Inverness and I remember Tommy Wright had kind of spoke to my agent. Right. But obviously, they don't really pay money because I still had a year left. Uh-huh. So he said, oh, he's been doing brilliant and that. We're keeping tabs on him, mm-hmm. uh, which was obviously nice to hear. Uh, so then I played that next six months 
uh, came to January. I'd heard like it was Partick Thistle and them really wanted right, okay. me. Uh, but the thing was that I really wanted to go at that point. In the January? Because I want, one, I wanted to move back home and one, things like I wasn't really enjoying Inverness as much anymore. Uh, so I'm trying to think what happened. So the gaff. I think I think I think I might be able to help you. So did they not? Did you not? Did you not sign a pre-contract in so, January? Aye. So I was. I remember I was on the phone with Tommy Wright uh, in my flat. It was me. And I ended up getting my dog, so I had to move in with Rooney because he had a garden. Ah right. In okay. So I remember we were sitting one day, uh, and whoever I think it was his phone went, and he missed it, and then my phone went and uh-huh. answered it, and I'd came back downstairs. I was Tommy Wright saying like he was on the phone to you, on the phone to me. And it was, it was like, oh, have you got his number? I was like, no, it's just a random number. And I told him, he's like, he's, he's just phoned me, me. <laughs> at the same time. <laughs> so the two of us were sitting in our house talking to Tommy Wright at the same time. Uh, and I think at the time, St Johnston were struggling. Like they really wanted a centre-back. Uh-huh. But it also helped that I was left-footed because they hadn't had a left-footed one. Uh, and I was lucky that John Robertson was really good. Yeah. Because St Johnston didn't pay much money at all. Uh-huh. And, you know... And you're also a, 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 a valuable win. player in the team at that time. So uh, it was all for come and play. And if you if a bigger club offers, we'll let you go yep, at all. Because yep, he yep. let Cole go to Ross County. Right, so okay. me and Cole were starting centre-backs. Aye. And he let the two of his go in the space of a week. Yeah. Which was brilliant of him. I honestly can't thank him enough. <laughs> uh, so I just remember just being so grateful. Yeah, I was, to him. Because it's, it's a difficult one for the club, isn't it? It is. He said that at the time because St Johnston, not many teams in Scottish football pay him any money at all. Yeah. It was a really low figure, but it was just to, I think it was out of desperation for that position at the Cause, time. Because they Saint needed John. you, they needed you so much at that time. Because Rooney, he signed the pre-contract at the same time as right, me. Okay. But he waited to the summer to join Ah, up. right, okay. So I was lucky in a sense that they kind of came and got me at that time, mm-hmm. uh, which was brilliant. I just remember. Uh, me, Rooney and Cole were in Nando's in Walshie and I got the call asking what kit number do you want All right, okay. you need to come down the road uh-huh. I just paid 30 quid for a Nando's and I had to leave it <laughs> <laughs> I was <scunner. laughs> I should never signed there <laughs> so you're straight straight down the road from straight down the nine to my girlfriend's flat uh-huh. uh, and then just the next day so basically is it so like the Monday you're Inverness Tuesday you're at St Johnson it was the Tuesday Monday night I drove down, Tuesday trained, it was snowing, so we trained, we'd done boxes and that right, was okay. it, because we had a corner of the pitch, and then the next night it was Celtic, at McDermott Park. Aye, straight in? And it was... Were you straight in? No, oh, no. I started in the bench, I came on at half time though, Right. for Boogie. For Boogie, aye. Boogie did a tough Straight switch. You know what mate, I was watching as well. That was the best Celtic. What was the score? 3-0. 3-0. Celtic went 3-0 up in half, uh-huh. it's the best Celtic I've ever uh-huh. played uh-huh. attacking, it was grass. Did you come on left back then? No, Left centre back, ah, left right, at okay. three. Booth in it, um, ah, left, left centre back, at three. Left, it, left at three, but right. I thought, thank God I didn't start that game. Yeah. Because the Graf and Edward yeah, were yeah, yeah. over and things, one, two, and Flying. Meg and people. Uh-huh. But, uh, and then from there, I just Play. played every game. Mm-hmm. It was brilliant. And you've had, a, you've had a very good, some would say a decent, a decent spell at St Johnson. Aye, it was, it was brilliant. Even that kind of, before COVID, uh-huh. we done we done really well. I think we got there. I got there when we were ninth and the team were already right. kind of picking up results mm-hmm. and then we just we had a great few results and I think we ended up I remember it was quite contentious because they'd done the points per game at Covid oh yeah 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 and St Johnson had been in the top six all season uh-huh. and because of points per game we got ah, in instead of Hibs take that so so did you finish sixth then finished sixth oh, you finished sixth that season aye thank god because if you finished seventh you didn't get a bonus <laughs> <laughs> if you finished the top six you do so so that, that that was your first season there and then Callum Davidson came in yep. after. Yep. And that was that was a pretty good season. <sighs> well Dennis we started really slow, we're playing, right, okay. playing brilliant, but we couldn't uh, And is this this is a game. Aye, you were your fixtures were right on from the start, weren't they, after COVID were they? Was it st- I think what was that? COVID stopped in the March, didn't it? This league. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And then we started up in August, didn't we? August aye. Aye. So it was like kinda it was like a two week pre season then right. we're straight Straight in, in the games. Uh I just remember us having a slow start and it was kind of similar to this year. We're just not like winning games. Yeah. And we just weren't like, we were creating so much but just mm-hmm, not scoring. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I just remember all of a sudden it clicked and we just, I think it was like post-Christmas, we just went on 
an unbelievable run. Even the league we managed to get for like ninth to we ended up finishing fifth. Right. And obviously with the two cups. Yeah, incredible. two cups. The double. <laughs> the double. It's still crazy. crazy saying it now. Crazy, mate. Uh, considering I, as well, we'd, we'd beat Hibs twice, who were very good yeah. in that season. Yeah. I always think, like, as a football player, I've obviously never won anything apart from the Youth Cup. <laughs> <laughs> no score in that? I, I died twice. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, I always think, like, wins like that, like that season you had, it's probably one of these things that you probably won't appreciate how big an achievement it was until you maybe look back. I think sometimes in the moment it's hard to even acknowledge like what you've done as a team and as a as an individual. Mental. I just remember when we beat Hibs in the Scottish Cup, we were all running around like saying like, "What have we done here? Like, it's crazy." Kings and of I, Perth. The night after. <laughs> <laughs> what the cut was that? <laughs> uh, the night after, not that that night, we were all just we were Aye. in the stadium having a drink together. Aye. And like you know how when you're drunk you get a wee bit like you all start speaking openly. Aye, aye, you aye. just we couldn't believe what we'd done. Aye. Kind of thing. Incredible. It's, even now, like this season, I'm thinking, like looking back, I remember we beat Rangers at Ibrox, Big Xander's yeah. he'd on. Yeah. Uh, and just after it in the changing room at that time, we're all just jumping about and straight on the bus. Aye. But see, when you look back, mate, that's wild, isn't to it? To beat that Rangers team Aye. like that on TV, it was yeah. it was mental. I said, like looking back at these things, you're probably like, as, as time goes on, you'll probably Get just more be like, that about was it. like unbelievable. Start adding things to the story. I <laughs> said, I. <laughs> It's a treble you won. Aye. <laughs> <laughs> Aye, so a couple of quotes here. The domestic trophy um, double is the greatest season in the club's history. It is, isn't it? Uh, I think it it's to got be. to be. They've had some pretty brilliant seasons, especially under Tommy Wright. Aye. Obviously winning the Scottish. I think they finished, they maybe finished third or fourth that year, which mm-hmm. is incredible as well. So and ha- so see for you in terms of like how, how wh- what is the, what's the team spirit like? during a season like that like is everyone buzzing is training like is everyone just on it like yeah. is everything flow? I always feel like when you're when you're performing well when you're getting results everything flows and the games ended up flowing I honestly thought even though like well we're St Johnston we never beat teams 2-3-0 and three nil, yeah. we'd maybe win 1-0 one 2-1 uh-huh. but we ended up going into every game like with a belief that's it yeah. like mm-hmm. it was crazy considering uh, but no I wouldn't say even training in that it wasn't Every day wasn't brilliant. It's just the same as, yeah, yeah, yeah. as everything in life. Yeah. But uh, we had a brilliant dressing room. Mm-hmm. We, all a, we all had a great laugh. Uh, Big Runes is the one that Aye. keeps... Your best mate. He's the glue that holds everything together. He's <laughs> the loudest guy you've ever met. Is he? But he's one of the best guys you'll ever is meet. Is he Joe Thompson-esque in that uh, dressing room? Is he? Aye, he's really loud, but he's, he loud? he's funny. Aye, and he's friendly as anything. He kind of brought brings everyone in a wee bit. Because he's like... He makes himself the middle. So aye, everyone aye, can kind of... Aye. So, because I remember he brought a brought a boombox, mate, to the Scottish Cup final, <laughs> carrying it over his shoulder, <laughs> and he had a mic with him. So was see it, the f- was week, he giving it about the mic? week building up to the Scottish Cup final, aye, aye, presser aye. in, everyone's in TV, interviewing the gaffer, players, he's sitting in the changing room with the boombox <laughs> singing Sweet Caroline, mate, <laughs> Brilliant. going right throughout the stadium. Brilliant. So the I bet he had, had, had a good sing on it after the, after the one. Aye, we all had it. Aye. Aye. A few Budweiser's and that, and Coronas. Brilliant. Right, mate. So interestingly, I had a wee look at your your dad's Wikipedia, mm-hmm. Chris McCartan. He also won the Scottish Cup. Aye. Aye. S- was it same age? Maybe they met the exact. That's what I was thinking. It was the exact same age. Exact same age. That's pretty, pretty cool, wasn't it? That was back in nineteen ninety ninety one. And it was twenty years exactly since he won it. Aye. Nineteen ninety one. That's right. Actually. Aye. That's that's pretty remarkable. Aye, it's crazy. So, ha- do you feel as though you, in any way, do you feel? Like any pressure in that, and in, in the kind of your dad had a brilliant career, obviously won the cup. Do you feel any pressure? Like I, I want to do what, just what is it similar to him or, or better than him, or is there any? No, I think anything I've, there. I just think I've got my own. Mm-hmm. I never really thought it as pressure to achieve. Yeah, whatever he achieved, I think it's just my own. Well, already I've obviously had a completely different career path uh-huh. to what he's had. So uh-huh. Uh-huh. To, uh, he was a one club man, pretty much, wasn't he? Yeah, model most of his time. So. Like I said, it's uh, I never really thought of it as pressure. I mm-hmm. just think take every I know it's quite cliche, but maybe not take every day as it comes, but week by week, game by game. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Just try to focus on getting better and what comes with getting better, do you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Mm-hmm. So there was a a lot of interest from other clubs. Yeah. Mm-hmm. During was it 
was it the first or second? Was it you, you obviously the, the double season? It was the probably double season, yeah. Double so season. The second one. So there's a long list of clubs here. Mm-hmm. Now, this is all I love the internet. I was doing a bit of research, right? So the likes of Sheffield Wednesday, Sunderland, Swansea City, Bournemouth, Nottingham Forest, Barnsley, um, we've got Hibs, and also a Belgian club, Royal Union. I'm going to completely destroy the name of this. Royal Union Saint. Giloa. Giloa. Uh, yeah. Is that right? All those clubs after. It's amazing what you can do with 50 quid in a price. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what's phone, your, your phone your mate. <laughs> phone your mate, by the way, here. Drop a few of these teams in, will right. you? <laughs> Honestly, though, mate, like, that I think to, to kind of have those kind of clubs, like, interested in you, does that, it's, it's obviously pretty amazing. It means you're doing something right, obviously, but how, how does that make you feel as a player, like, playing games? Do you even think about that? Uh, not not when I'm playing, no, because my main focus, like, is you win games with, with your club, do you know what I yep. mean? That's the main thing. Anything that comes after that is because you've won games for your club, so yeah. we're always just taking it game by game, try to win, but... Obviously, it's nice, but we had a great team last year, so it was uh, it wasn't easy to play well. But we were all doing well, and it was great to be a part of it. And I think me, uh, me, Gordy, and Jace got a real like the back three. Yeah, like we played nearly a lot, a lot of every credit. game together. Yeah. But we, it was because Big Xander behind us, we had Rooney and Callum Booth on the wings, we had brilliant players in front of us that would work. Do you know what yeah. I mean? It was it was a full team thing. Uh, so, but. So do you, do you ever think about these teams like seeing a game do you ever think oh like I don't know Swansea they might be up in the stand tonight watching me eh uh, no because I think you'll end up uh, you drive yourself crazy yeah. that wouldn't it you'd yeah. end up overthinking things maybe overcomplicating yeah. things yeah uh, I just always know like one thing my dad always said was regardless of who you're playing like whether you're in the cup you're a pre-season friendly like mm-hmm. somebody's always watching so yeah. always yeah. do well do you know what I mean never mm-hmm never sack it off or anything like that which you can't do because uh, you end up getting found out really quickly yeah no it's spot on so we do have some quick fire questions which we're going to come to in a minute I never actually pre-warned you of these did I? no you know. oh no you're getting nervous <laughs> none, <laughs> none of them are difficult mate don't worry none of them are difficult um, but I want to quickly ask you one one more question I think unless I think of anything else after mm-hmm. but in your position right now and over the next five, ten years, what are your aspirations as a football player? What are your aspirations for your career? What's Jamie McCart's aspirations for the next ten years? When you look back, when you're finished playing, uh, I think just to to do the best I can. I think I I realised that when I was in the kind of tougher times, is you know whatever you can achieve with what you've got is brilliant. So I just think you know try to achieve, play as high at a level as possible as I can I think would be would be really good that's something I'm always ins- uh, can aspire to to work as hard maybe looking at other players and try to get to that level mm-hmm. I know they always you shouldn't compare yourself but yeah. there's players at higher levels than you mm-hmm. and you mm-hmm. obviously appreciate that and try to aim for that so uh, I think that's something that's my main thing and any byproducts that come with that is obviously a bonus Yeah, because like you said in football you can't can't predict what's going to happen yeah. one day to the next no 100% is there any clubs? Is there a, is there one particular club in your head that you want to like that you just, you just want to play at? Mm, I mean, everyone because obviously at a time it was it was Celtic because you were yeah, you were at Celtic. You could say any team because n- never would have imagined when I was seventeen playing with Celtic. Yeah. I'd have played with Alloa, Inverness, St Mirren, mm-hmm. signed by St Johnston. Do you know what I mean? So, uh, no, there's obviously clubs you could easily say, but there's no mm-hmm. one set in my my head mm-hmm. okay should we do the quick fire can we edit it so I can read it first <laughs> no chance <laughs> we are going straight in boy listen the first eight are easy mate first eight what first comes after oh, eight there's, there's, uh, there's 30 no nah, I'm joking nah, there's 10 there's 10 don't worry you need to get back and walk that dog so we'll make it we'll make them snappy so there's eight questions eight quick fire the last two are just a little bit a little bit kind of longer right um I think I think we've pretty much we've covered we've covered we've covered Jamie Jamie McCart. Everyone switched off after ten minutes. Anyway. No way! This will be the best podcast they've ever listened to. The Jamie's only one listening. <laughs> right. Okay. You ready for the quick fire? Aye, aye. What are your favourite football boots to wear? 
I'm terrible with football boots, mate. So I chop and change. Do you chop and change? Aye. Uh, my Some, feet are you, quite often players have one pair. They just. But they keep Adidas, mate. I like the Nemesis ones. They discontinued them. Ah, yeah. I liked ones. Remember the CTRs and all that. CTRs, they aye. Discontinued. Aye. So what, I chop what, and change. So what are you wearing right now? I think I just. I think it's like Adidas X's or something. Adidas X, right? Okay. Aye. Okay. Uh, but I remember the first time I seen you once I was wearing Pumas, then I wore Adidas, mm-hmm. then I changed style Adidas, so mm-hmm. it's just chop and change. Okay, so but Adidas Adidas mainly. Adidas aye, probably. Who is your favourite football player? Uh, favourite footballer. Could be past or present, like someone you looked up to when you were young or someone that you look up to now. Oh my favourite football to watch simply because he was left footed as well was Van Persie. Yeah, I loved Robin, Robin Van Persie. Van Persie His aye. technique was a joke, wasn't it? Aye, it was Just ridiculous. Him, he was ridiculous, mate. He was probably my favourite player to watch. I think. Mm-hmm. What football player did you look up to most growing up? Uh, so it could it could could be someone generally on the big stage, or it could be someone within the club that you were. Uh, the one I always remember when I was at Celtic was obviously Charlie. Yeah, because he was left footed, mm-hmm, and mm-hmm, I just thought mm-hmm. he was brilliant. Yeah, fantastic, and he played like. Player. A few positions, so I always, uh, always kind of looked up to him. I thought he was a brilliant player. Okay, what is the worst pitch slash stadium you've ever played at? You know that's at that Fort William. <laughs> <laughs> it was, to be fair, was that a bad pitch? Was it a grass eye? Shocking, mate. Was it? But it's right under Ben Nevis. Oh Jesus! To so see during the day, it would be absolutely beautiful, mate. But aye, it was aye, snow aye. and freezing cold, mate. You couldn't see a thing. So Fort William has got to be the worst pitch you've played aye. at. All right, what is the best pitch slash stadium you've ever played at? Kinda, maybe saying as a Celtic fan, it's kind of hard to look past Parkhead, yeah. it? but I'm trying to think. Do you remember we played in that uh, that BPL league? Remember we went down to play oh, Aston yeah. Villa? Aye, aye, aye. I thought Aston oh. Villa Stadium was brought the pitch oh, was incredible. It was. Remember Boyata played with us? Aye. I know he did, aye. aye. I remember that. I mean, I actually like, Bongo Hoff played, didn't he? Yeah, he did. I thought I thought that pitch, was that one of the hybrid pitches, like wee bit of grass? Sure after, it was, aye. Aye. That was phenomenal, mate. That I've was got, incredible. Aye, it really was. And I remember... I was on the bench though. You maybe played. No, I was. I was on the bench as no, well. No, I played Villa. Oh, did you play that game? Remember Everton? I think we were younger. Hey. We were on the bench. I think only Joe and that. I remember played. playing. I remember Liverpool playing Liverpool. Oh, but we played them at some random stadium, did we know? Aye, we did. Aye. Aye, we didn't. Where was them. Everton? Everton was it good? All oh, right, I don't think aye. I was there. I don't know. I just remember how good the pitches the were. Pitch good there aye, as well. Probably. So Villa probably up there in Parkhead. I thought it was really good. Aye. Okay, favorite book ever. Favorite book. You, you, you've read a couple of books, haven't I, you? I, I like reading books, but it's one of the things that seems like a chore. See, when you start reading, it's easy, but yeah. try to get it. Do you know what one I liked? Uh, is it 5am? It was a morning routine one. Um, it was like a yellow book. That's so nice, it was brilliant. 5am? You've probably read that. Was it called 5am? No. I think it had 5am in the name, maybe. Yeah, I'm going to look into it. I'm going to get you after it, but it was a good book. I um, thought it was really good. What about, do you ever listen to audiobook version or is it always just, if you were going to read it, it would be actually read oh, the book? I prefer reading that. Like, I only like podcasts and that. Favourite film? Uh, I need to say I Am Legend because that's what I am legend. want to get a German Shepherd. Was it? Aye. You're quite a movie goer, aren't you? I remember back back in the Celtic days, you, you liked a series or a movie, didn't you? Because we had to, if you were staying in hotels all the time, aye, aye, so bored. Aye, aye. So I am legend for favorite film, is, uh, and listen, see because you dropped in that you listen to podcasts. I'm going to ask you what your favorite podcast is, and you can't say the Sam Wardrop show. Right, that's my <laughs> asterisk favorite. That's uh, number two. Uh, try to think. I really liked uh, Jamie Carragher's one. I listened a lot to him when I was right. during COVID with the uh-huh. driver self, uh-huh. just because of the kind of guests he had on. Aye, uh, and I like that Ben Foster's now. Ben Foster's, yeah. Just when it's, I just like when it's football stuff. Aye, aye, aye. Nothing better. The stories and stuff. Just stories, aren't it? When you hear of different clubs and different stuff. Aye, just what, what, what kind of goes on in our workings. Aye, and obviously you get a good few of that open goal one. Aye. You always get a good few stories out of that, so. Favourite food ever? Uh, this is going to sound really posh, but I think it's sushi. Oh, sushi, aye, to be fair. I know you're good. posh as well, you come from Bears <laughs> Den, so. Sushi's good. I love sushi. It does come at a price tag, though. Like, proper, well done it sushi. It does come at a price tag. Where's the best sushi you've ever had? And it can't be a... Season <laughs> <laughs> my private joke there. Uh, do you know who's... I can't say it, it's got to be really posh. Go on, see it. 
<laughs> Where have you been? It's not your sushi, is it? No, this is your sushi's oh, terrible. Oh, that's terrible. Yeah, your Waitrose. sushi. <laughs> Waitrose, aye. Waitrose, Waitrose and Byers Road. Wee, you would know oh, that. I know what you are, aye. I know what you are. Do you get like ten a tenner for a pot? Tenner, and do you get quite a lot with that? Uh, it's good, mate. Is it? It's very good. Cause ten pound. I'd want a lot of sushi for ten pound. Aye, uh, it's a full meal. Is it? Aye, it's proper nice as well because they make it fresh in front of you. Didn't that's they? brilliant, aye. So, so oh, nothing better. There's nothing better. Okay, so the last two questions, a little bit longer. You've kind of answered them throughout, but what do you define success as, like, as an individual or just generally, like, if you were if you were talking to someone else, like, uh, how do you define the success? I think getting the most out of yourself. Okay. Because you could easily say, oh, I want to win X amount of trophies, yep. but I'd never have predicted I'd win a double in one season, do you mm-hmm, know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And if I had won that, I wouldn't have said I'm any less successful, do you yep. know what I mean? So uh, I think just making the most out of your ability and also try to improve on your ability. Okay. So I think that for me. The final question. What would you say to a young player starting off on their journey? Uh, I think one thing, and I, I think this was the main thing I took from Celtic, was don't take everything too serious. Don't get too caught up in being so desperate to get there as fast as you can. Like Try and enjoy it as much as you can. Because mm-hmm. uh, I think when you start taking the enjoyment out, it, it ends up becoming a proper... Like a slog, you mm-hmm. know what I mean? You're you're awake at night thinking, worried, nervous. Uh, but I think when you just actually enjoy it and that, I think you do better, but also you start to enjoy the kind of process mm-hmm. that comes mm-hmm. with it. Because mm-hmm. uh, if you think how much experiences and different things you get from being a footballer, uh, I think it's priceless. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, Jamie, that brings us to the end of the, the show. Did you enjoy that? Ah, it was brilliant, mate. I thoroughly okay. enjoyed it. And I want to wish you all the best for the season. Thank and you. I think with your attitude, mate, your mindset that you have, you will continue to go from strength to strength. Yeah, thank and you're you. getting a phone call. That. So we'll end it there. All right, cheers, <laughs> Jamie. Pleasure, mate. Cheers.